Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole Cordemosh and we are going to talk supplies. For this project you will need masking fluid and a masking fluid brush of your choice, a masking fluid pickup, a pencil and eraser, and for the paper I use the Hanamule collection series or arches. You will need some circular stencils. I also used a circular sponge. For the brushes I used some stiff brushes to lift the paint with the stencils. So any stiff brushes will do. For the actual painting I used a flat brush, a uh, round 12, round 8, round 6, and round 4. Some of the colors that I suggest for this project are Windsor Yellow, Indian Yellow, Iso Yellow Deep, Quinacridone Gold, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Transparent Pyrrole Orange, Scarlet Lake, Pyrrol Scarlet, Quin Scarlet, Quin Red, Sap Green, Leaf Green, Permanent Violet, and Bright Violet. I also suggest Perusian Blue or Neutral Tint. first thing I did was sketched out my foreground leaves on a piece of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Then you need to mask out your leaves with some masking fluid. Wetting the paper very well. I like to use a spritz bottle for this. We're going to add in all our wonderful fall colors with these beautiful purples and mauves and have this wonderful atmospheric background. We're doing this wet on wet watercolor technique and I am using my brush in a circular fashion to try and mimic the background lights that I see in the reference photo. I'm adding some quinacridone scarlet and some quinacridone red to this painting with some scarlet lake or pyrrole scarlet as well will work. Getting a really nice warm yellows in there. For the darker colors I like to mix contrasting colors so some reds with some greens will work or you can use neutral tints to produce a darker color for some of these shadow areas. So continue painting with circular strokes to mimic these background lights. Some circular sponges adds some variety of light effects. Once our paper is dry, we are going to go ahead and repeat our second step. Watercolors dry a lot lighter, so to get that vibrancy and the contrast that we are looking for, we're going to have to punch up those colors. This is where the magic happens, my people. Okay, break out those circular stencils and let's get lifting. I use a stiffer, damp brush to lift the colors in my circle template. You can further lift the color by using a paper towel to blot up the excess color. So following the reference photo, I am continuing my circular path around the painting.
Once your paper is completely dry, then we'll remove the masking fluid off of the foreground leaves. So from the reference photo, we can see that most of the leaves are out of focus and they have lost and found edges. So I am going to be using combinations of wet on wet and wet on dry to construct this effect. Using the colors that we have already used, I am combining them and letting them bleed into one another will create these loose shapes. Of course, we will have to build up the layers of our foreground leaves just like we had to do two layers of our background colors. The leaves, they will need to stand out from the background so additional layers are necessary. And to help the leaves pop out from the background and to get that backlit effect, we can outline some areas that are in the shadows and areas of the leaves that need more contrast. Keep making the magic happen with the rest of your leaves and let your first layer dry. Okay, so once your paper completely dries, we are going to pump up the vibrancy on our leaves with a second layer. An additional coat of paint is also going to change the value of our leaves, which is a good thing because right now they're blending in too much with the background. The change of value and the details that we add are going to help bring our leaves more into the foreground.
Okay, we're in the home stretch, guys. If you're still here, thanks for watching to the end. And the last few details, I am adding a punch of bright yellow where I feel the leaves need it. Windsor yellow or Indian yellow are great jewel tone bright yellows that just did the trick here. A few leaves that I'm outlining to pop them into the foreground. This pretty much concludes our walk through the Boca leaves and I hope you enjoyed this painting process with me. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you.